Hey everybody and welcome back to another Land Development 101 episode. Again, this is part two of another series we started, which is building a house. Um, again, we cover all sorts of different videos covering the horizontal side of land development, but uh, now we're starting to breach into more of the vertical side and how the horizontal underground starts to relate to actually building a house. So anyway, if you haven't seen the first video, go check it out where we cover the, the grading of the pad to get a level. And now we're going to jump into part two, which is retaining walls. Just as a little recap from our previous grading video, so here is a snapshot of our lot. The original grade of this sloped pretty significantly from the back down to the front as portrayed by this little arrow here. And then let's go ahead, we're going to take a look at a sectional view of the plans. This yellow line basically shows what the existing grade was, and again, a slope from the back all the way to the front where the street is. Um, and the pink is the, was the proposed grade, which is what we graded to. So at the top, you have that nice flat area for the house, as shown in the previous picture in the previous slide. And then you have the uh, uh, proposed grade for the driveway heading all the way down to the street. But with that being said, since we had to cut into it, now means we have to install some retaining walls. So here, let's look at another view. This is the plan view of the house. The black bold lines that you can see here along the rear is a retaining wall. And then these two on either side of the driveway going down are also retaining walls. But a couple of little changes we had decided to make. Uh, originally, we had told the engineer that we want as little retaining walls as possible because we wanted to save money. So we're like, let's get away from it if we can. But once we started grading, you know, we decided that, you know, it would be best to um, add the retaining walls in the front. That way we don't have to worry about sloping uh, this slope down here in the front and then slope here on the side. Basically, we, we you know, with kids, we wanted to utilize more of our area and we just thought long term it would be much, much more beneficial. And uh, we're glad we did. So what we did, we added these retaining walls in the front. We were able to just grade straight across to the retaining walls. And again, just utilize and have much more uh, livable space outside of our home. So if you remember what cut and fill means from the previous video, or if you don't remember, go back and watch it. So basically we had cut into the slope on this side and we had to move that dirt over and fill up that front to, in order to get that flat area. So you can see here in the picture that here's the top of the slope um, and then it slopes down. It will eventually go flat across to the retaining walls, but of course, since the retaining walls aren't there right now, we couldn't fill all the way to the, to the, the side just yet. And here's the proposed retaining walls. So before you get all your materials ordered and shipped to the site and ready to go, um, let's go over a couple things that you need to know and have in order before you actually start building your retaining wall. So this here is a snapshot of the retaining wall standard detail. This is from the city's website. Now, typically, wherever you build your house within any city or county or whatever the governing jurisdiction is, they're going to have their own standard detail for a retaining wall, typically. Um, and again, you could just pull this off your website. The civil engineer that you got should already know that and should already have that included on their design. However, if the city or the county doesn't have a standard uh, detail for retaining wall, then your civil engineer will drop one and include it in their plans. So there are two retaining wall details and, and the only differences here is this is the toe detail where the footing actually uh, comes back and is embedded into the fill side of the hill. The heel option, it's basically opposite. The footing kicks back around and it heads out and it goes out this way. We did the heel option um, because we just didn't want to cut more into the slope and pull out more dirt. Uh, figured it'd be much a, a lot more trouble. And it worked out. However, you just have to remember though, if you're going to go for this option, one of the downsides of doing this heel option is that you're not really going to be able to do a whole lot of landscaping or planting because right above this concrete footing, you're going to have maybe about four to six inches of, of fill. So again, you're not really able to do much, much planting. We were able to still do some, as you'll see, you know, in our future videos, but um, it was, it was still pretty difficult and sparse and we weren't able to do a lot. So you have to keep that in mind when you're building your house, if you're looking at footings, uh, are you going to want to do some sort of planting or, or put some trees in right next to some of these retaining walls? So you have to keep that in mind. Below here are just some notes. Um, depending on how big, uh, how tall your, your retaining wall is and the size of the slope and things like that, it's going to vary and change up some of these key dimensions here for your footing or keyway, um, as well as your rebar and spacing. So that's something that your contractor will have to look at. 
And just some general notes here on the second page, uh, talking about the concrete block masonry um, as far as their mortar type, um, the PSI, things like that, a lot of generic information. But the main thing I wanted to bring your attention to are these required inspections. Inspections are key in construction, and uh, these are the three that they call out. So footing, you want to make sure the inspector is getting called out before you pour the footing, because obviously they need to check the depth, the spacing of the rebar, the size of the rebar, and make sure it's installed according to plans. And then once they approve that, then you pour your footing. Your second inspection is the rebar and the pre-grout of the actual wall itself. So once they actually build the wall, before they fill up the cells in the CMU block, again, your inspector will need to come out and verify. And once everything's said and done, they'll come out, everything is placed and backfilled, and uh, they'll give you your final sign-off, hopefully. So here are a couple photos of us getting started. Uh, here's our contractor and they have their mini excavator out there and they are excavating for the keyway and the footing, as you can see here. Now this is along the, the, the rear of our lot and then this is one of the new ones that we added, as we mentioned before, along the front side. Once the footings were dug, then they went back and they started installing all the rebar um, per the detail and per the plan. Uh, some of this rebar here is not actually part of the wall. They simply just have it set up just to hold up some of that rebar until the concrete is poured to prevent it from falling over on top of each other. Uh, you'll notice here that they, they're only installing the rebar in the footing, but uh, they also have this one that's going to be partly in the, re in the footing as well as it's going to be sticking out. These are called dowels. So basically when they're embedded in one section of the wall and then they stick out ready for this next part of the wall to be built on top of it. Uh, and that just creates a, a better bond for the actual wall itself to adhere and bond to the footing itself. And once that's set, we call for our first inspection on the footing. And then once the inspector came out, he marked with green the ones that were okay, but and then he marked uh, with a different color to show the ones that needed to be addressed, which was either spacing or didn't meet the depth. Uh, but once we addressed that, then we were ready for our first pour. Okay, here are the concrete trucks. Um, they had to back into our driveway. Unfortunately, they couldn't get all the way to the top just because of how narrow the driveway was and how steep it was right at that top point. So we had to utilize a smaller concrete pump trailer, which is why you, why you see that pickup truck right there. So behind it, you can see there's a little concrete uh, pump trailer. And um, here's the hose to carry that concrete all the way to the top. Yeah, keep in mind, I highly recommend if, you, if anyone's looking to build a house on a, on a flag lot, um, you know, building on a flag lot with a narrow driveway, especially on a slope, does make things a little difficult as far as delivering materials and getting bigger trucks and whatnot up to the top. So definitely keep that in mind if you're looking to build on a on a on a flag lot. Definitely presents its challenges. And just here's another video. So they're holding that that hose as they continue to fill up the keyway and the footing with concrete. Keep in mind here what we were able to do because it was so rocky and stiff that when the contractor was excavating, he was able to utilize uh, the hole as the footing itself without needing to form up any barriers or footing itself. So that kind of saved money as far as labor and material because as you can see here, again, there are no forms. It's just the hole itself that's the footing because the dirt was stiff enough that it can just hold itself up, which is fine. However, one thing to keep in mind, the, the downside to that is that when you are digging, if you're pulling up bigger rocks and boulders, unfortunately, you can't help it. But once you pull it out, sometimes it might make your hole and your footing bigger, which means you're going to be using more concrete to fill that hole up, which could mean uh, essentially more material and more money. Okay, after the concrete is poured for the footing, the guys will actually, within the same day, install the first level of the CMU block wall. Uh, this is known as wet setting that first course. And the reason why they do this is because while the concrete is still wet and malleable, they're able to just set the block right into it. Um, and what this does, this allows the wall to have a much stronger bond between the footing and the actual the, the wall itself. And it helps the guys make sure that this first layer is, is very level. Um, it also eliminates any cold joint, meaning if they were to come back later after the concrete fully cured, and then they come back and lay that first course, 
Um, it's much more difficult as now they're probably deal dealing with debris, dust, anything on there that makes it a lot much more difficult for them to be able to try to get a, a level course. And as mentioned before, the dowels, now you can see that here are the dowels that are sticking out from the footing and then they just start placing the uh, CMU block around that. After the footing is done, the guys will basically come out a little bit later and start building up the rest of the retaining wall. However, keep in mind, depending on how high your retaining wall is, uh, you will not be allowed to build the full height of your retaining wall all at once and grout it all at once. You are required to build only five feet at a time and then grout it and then build the next five feet at a time. This is known as lifts in the construction world. So because our rear retaining wall was greater than five feet, we had to do two different lifts. Uh, but once we did our first lift, we were then ready for our second inspection, which is the rebar and the pre-grout. Now, as you can tell with the CMU block walls, you can see that there are empty cells in the middle. And that's where your inspector is going to be looking and checking out before you place the grout. He's going to look at, again, the rebar, the size of the rebar, spacing, and all that good stuff. One other thing to keep in mind is the aesthetics of the CMU block wall. Um, there are a couple different styles and versions you can get of the CMU block. This here, what you see in the gray, is just your typical precision block. There's nothing fancy about it. It's your bare minimum um, and most likely going to be your most affordable option. It uh, doesn't look the best, but we went with precision along the front because once you backfilled, you weren't going to see it. So this wasn't a big deal to have anything decorative. However, on the, on the previous slide, you could see that... Uh, we went with a little nicer color, it was tan, and then you'll see in the final photos, but uh, we had another layer or two called split block, just to break it up and make it look nice. But if you go, again, if you go with something a little bit more decorative than your precision, you're probably gonna be paying just a little bit more. Okay, once we passed our second inspection, we were ready to grout the cells. Another pretty big component of the retaining wall is the drainage. On the left here is a snapshot for the same a standard detail drawing we were looking at earlier. Now the reason why the drainage is so important is because your retaining wall is holding up a lot of earth and that water can percolate behind it and essentially just get trapped back here. And if there's no way to escape, over time that water can sit there pool and it will damage your CMU block wall. And that's not good. So what we had to do was install this four inch PVC drainage pipe but it's perforated, which means you can't see it here, but there are slits, small slits all along this drainage pipe. And what that does is it allows for the water to uh, come into your PVC drainage pipe and essentially just get kicked out around the sides and thus allowing for your water to escape. And here we have a few photos showing the drainage getting installed. And you can see that the gravel is getting, getting uh, placed around that pipe as well per that detail. On the left here, you can see we've taken our perforated PVC pipe and we've actually installed it within uh, this filter fabric sleeve and what that does it prevents any sediment or sand or dirt or dust or whatnot to be able to get into the pipe and clog in it um, but it still allows the water to get through so it uh, becomes very handy. Here's another preventive measure to allow water to escape. Uh, these are known as weep holes and uh, a lot of times these also are required on your retaining walls too and what these are uh, basically they're little gaps between your CMU block wall um, where your contractor doesn't install any grout and it's these little holes these little slits that stay there and basically that also allows a way for water to run out and uh, not stay behind your wall and another thing you want to do is waterproofing so what this does this is a product that gets applied to the back of your retaining wall and basically helps from any water or moisture that sits against your wall and keeps it from eroding or penetrating your CMU block wall and again just helps the uh, longevity of your CMU block wall and here basically we can just see one of the guys doing his thing, applying the grout and uh, making sure uh, that everything's level as he applies each block very carefully. You can see that there's a string line at each course that way they can make sure that that the wall continues to stay level as much as possible. Okay, before our wall finishes up, I wanted to bring this up. These are job cards. Basically, when you get your approved permits from the city, you're going to get these associated job cards, which is for your inspector. I mean, you hold them, but when the inspector comes out and performs his inspections, 
you give him this and he will sign off on these job cards uh, basically saying he approves of uh, the way it's going and it's fine and can continue to move forward and essentially when it's all said and done you receive your final on it for building this house we received two different permits one specifically for the grading and the other one for the actual building of the house itself now since we're just worried about retaining walls we're only going to be looking at this grading permit and the retaining walls are included on this grading permit because if you remember on the grading uh, the grading plans the retaining walls are shown on that as well so the retaining walls are associated with your grading permit and as you can see here we have our inspectors sign off on some of these keep in mind though this job card was a little funky and didn't have its own retaining walls so what he did he just kind of made his own comments here and signed off on it so he's got retaining wall first lift okay and then all the way down until he gets to the final um, he even has notes here of when thing what was happening and what he was taking note of this is what you'll essentially submit back to the city to show him that you did everything correctly okay now that we completed building our retaining wall um, we are now ready for the backfill and the fine grading so here I had one of my guys come back out and now he's taking that extra spoils from the retaining wall and we start backfilling. Now here's a photo of our front retaining wall. What we had to do when we're compacting, when we're backfilling compacting here, we also had to do this in lifts as well. Because if you just backfill the whole thing all the way to the top and then just try to compact the top, you have all this loose dirt underneath that's uh, got all these voids. And so how you have to do that is you have to do it in lifts, uh, typically eight inch lifts. Um, and then you and then you moisturize and compact it in order to get the most out of your compacted dirt and not have any uh, settlement issues later on. And here's one of the final photos of the backfill uh, where everything is leveled out all the way up to the retaining walls, which I think which I think looks really nice. And I think we made the right decision in installing these retaining walls to be able to get a nice uh, level pad and get the most out of our lot. And here are some photos of the front driveway leading up to the pad. And here's after we fine graded a little bit more and backfilled against those retaining walls and started sloping out our driveway. So it was a lot of fun to start seeing everything start coming together and taking shape. And here are some more of the final photos with now the house pad laid out, ready to go. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you stay tuned for our next video where we're going to be talking about actually trenching for the footing and the foundation for the actual house. So it's going to be really exciting. Um, make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something new. See you next time.